Friends, you may be wondering why I'm sitting here on the floor today beside this washing machine. Just want to use it as a simple object lesson. A little bit earlier on today, I read an online article by Harold Vaughan, a great preacher, a great evangelist, a great brother in Christ, a man greatly beloved and used of God. And on Harold Vaughan's Facebook page, he had an article about the institutional church versus the life-giving church. The institutional church versus the life-giving church. As I read that article, my soul was stirred. I have to confess that it was greatly rebuked in my own heart and life as well. It's so easy in evangelical circles to get caught up with the denomination or the name of the church or the name of the fellowship or the personality and the need to keep the church going. And so easy to miss out on the blessing of God and miss out on the fullness of the blessing of the Lord. We long in these days, and I'm sure you do as well, for souls to get converted, for believers to be built up in their faith, for the church of Jesus Christ to move forward, to impact the community that we're in, to impact the cities or the towns and villages that we find ourselves in, and to see believers built up, and most of all, to experience the life-changing power of God in the midst of of his people. And yet it is so easy in many respects to become institutionalized. I encourage you if you type in Harold Vaughan, that name and that Facebook page, there's maybe a website as well. Look for that little article. It's just entitled Institutional Churches versus Life-Giving Churches. I'm not much of a computer man. There's a quote in it. I wrote it down in this little notebook here for future reference. Let me read it to you. The life of God animated the early church. The sense of strong community had drawing power. Conversions occurred daily. Sure, they had problems, but they were problems associated with life rather than decay. They had not turned in on themselves like a washing machine when the lid is closed. All kinds of commotion inside with no impact outside. Ingrowing churches make no impact on the surrounding neighbourhood, but God-saturated assemblies shake things up. And I just thought about that statement. Many churches are like a washing machine when the lid is closed, or here in the UK whenever the door is closed. All kinds of commotion inside with no impact outside. Ingrowing churches make no impact on the surrounding neighbourhood, but God-saturated assemblies shake things up. I'm not sure what church or what fellowship you go to, but my burden and my prayer for the church that I'm involved in, the church that I pastor, is that God would come and saturate his people with his presence and power. Duncan Campbell, the great evangelist and revivalist, said revival is a community saturated with God. And we desperately, desperately need God to come and visit his church and to shake things up so we won't turn in on ourselves, we won't become in-growing churches. So many churches in this province of ours that are in growth are simply growing with the transfer of members from one church to another, often bringing their baggage and their problems with them. We long for the Spirit of God to stir up things to stir up the hearts of his people. It's so easy to become like the church that we read about in Revelation chapter 3, the church at Sardis. And the Lord Jesus Christ, as he writes to this church, says, I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful. That means be careful, be sober, be vigilant, be watchful or be prayerful. Strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. I wonder today, are we just institutional churches, institutionalized, all about keeping a, a church or a fellowship or a denomination going, paying the bills, keeping the lights on, paying the pastor a salary, and just going through the mundane form of having church? Or is Christ in the midst? Strengthen the things that are ready to die. May God come and visit us again and make us to be a life-giving organism, a living church in this needy and dark 
generation. Friends, God bless you. Harold Vaughan, tune in and you'll be blessed as you listen to that brother. God bless you, friends. Thank you so much.